definitely would like to see how I could focus on my upper chest more, see if mm -hmm. there's something I can uh, steal from you. A Mr. Olympia style workout. You mm -hmm. used to have a chest so big you could rest your chin on it, so. When I used to sleep on the plane, my chest would hit my, <laughs> my chin. So, uh, yeah, let's just go through your chest routine then. Okay. Everyone wants to know what you do for chest, so. Like, the type of chest routine that you would do if you were trying to build it, not just a maintenance program, but mm -hmm. the, maybe even the routine that, you know, early on in your career, mm -hmm. you know, to really, uh, to build mass. Mm -hmm. All right, let's start with a machine press and do some, warm up the chest a little bit and then uh, we'll work right into it. I think people have a hard time uh, learning to feel a muscle, you know, trained by feel. So with chest, are there any little tricks you know, most importantly, when you do a chest movement, you're gonna focus on really keeping the chest high, okay? So you don't wanna kind of curl over, you wanna keep the chest out and you wanna contract. Right. Everything is about contracting, it's not about just pushing the weight. So most importantly, you wanna feel that peak contraction, especially at the top, where you're not really locking out the elbows, but you're just, you're getting a, a really good squeeze on the chest. If you put your mind into the muscle and you think how it works and you visualize that chest working from the bottom to the top, which I can see, I mean your upper chest is flexing in this from the bottom up. Everything's working from the bottom up. There has to be a plan of attack every time you go to the gym. So what I try to do is, is I try to visualize every workout prior than, than the time I walk into the gym. So, like we started here, and I'm not used to training at this gym every day, but I can tell you what I'm gonna do for second and third exercise right now before, you know, as soon as you say chest, it's like an automatic switch. I know what's, what I'm gonna do. Right. Also, when you train, you got a, a nice steady rhythm. In other words, you're not resting at the bottom, resting at the top, it's just like a because, nice steady rhythm. Because the reps, the reps especially for me because I'm bigger look shorter. So really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, when I get into it, the ch chest starts off in a contracted position and the movement's only where I can actually feel my chest pumping. All right, let's put a 25 on here. Let's add one, a little more. I'm sure you viewers don't want to see Mr. Olympia train with light weights. Imagine uh, it'd be me with 70 more pounds of muscle. <laughs> We're the same height. I'm with <coughs> 175, so. Oh, you're 5'7", too? <laughs> yeah, I'm 5'7", according to Frank Zane. Don't worry, I took insult to it, too, since we're the same height. He said, he said how does it feel to be 5'7"? <laughs> So all you guys, facts, Jay Cutler is five foot nine inches. Come on, two more. One more, one more, one more, one more. Good, good, good. Everyone always does incline for upper chest. How do you feel about this, this, upper chest versus your lower? It's all one muscle, so. There's no way to really isolate, I believe. I think it's, it's a farce to think that, well, I'm gonna do incline, so it's only gonna work my upper chest. Right, it's one muscle group. I think it's gonna, it's gonna help, but remember, angles is how you build muscle. That's why we choose different movements. So, I always believe that people lack upper chest and they think, okay, well, I'm gonna do more incline movements is gonna help that. I don't, I don't think that either someone's genetically gifted with it or they're not. I've seen guys do tons of incline stuff and their upper chest never grows. It's the whole chest in itself. Remember, I told you work from the bottom up. Right. As you build, your upper chest is gonna have no choice but to grow. Everyone's body chemistry is gonna be different. So just contraction and all this should contract every rep. See that? 
squeeze good. It's all about the contraction, you know, each rep. So right now I'm squeezing at that peak. I'm squeezing the chest. And remember guys, you always want to spot from the elbows when you're doing a lot of these movements. Work with the body. Never slam your weights either. Only I can do that in my home gym. <laughs> No yelling either. Do you ever yell? On, honestly. Only when I wanted people's attention. Attention? So throughout your career, you've built up to, you know, on a big muscle group, say chest, built up to 20 total sets. So what are you doing like, you were doing maybe five exercises, four sets of piece, or? I was doing it? three times six, plus the warm ups, a couple extras here and there. The best way you can actually watch is to see someone do something and perform like these kind of workouts where you see, okay, this is what he does. Right. 90% of anyone that approaches Jay Cutler at any event in the world will say to me, I watch your videos on YouTube. Did you just refer to yourself in the third person? Yeah. <laughs> when you're Jay Cutler, you can do that. They watch the YouTube videos. Yeah. Because number one, it's free, and it's the best content that you can find out there with pe for people to see. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Up. Good. What do you work up to on a flat bench? I don't do much flat bench, but you know, there was a time when I did. There was a time when I used to be a lot stronger. You know, I could, strongest I ever was, I was never very strong. I was always kind of skinny with long arms. So bench was never a strength for me, but I could do 315 for, you know, five. That was at my strongest. Uh, but 225, usually that's, you know, that's 12 reps. Yeah. Same thing with this, contraction, bar never touches your chest, okay? Do you envision things, like I tell people to almost envision like trying to crush the bar between them so they get that contraction? What I tend to do is I tuck my chin, and what I want to feel is my chest almost hit my chin. Well, my chest isn't that Yeah. <laughs> Bro science is something you heard in the gym that's not really founded on anything other than some guy told you and you just take it to be fact. To me, that would be what bro science yes. is. So for you through the years, what was that balance between, you know, research like, you know, the real science, academic science versus application going into the gym and finding what worked for you? I never, <coughs> I never went for textbook to anything. Yeah. So if someone read a book and I read about biomechanics and how the muscle functions, I didn't give a shit about that. Right. I learned from reading books of Arnold and Bob Paris and Frank Zane and you know Chris Dickerson and these guys that put out content. I can appreciate, look, it's nice to have you know, the foundation of science, but uh, I think people get way too hung up on that right now. They want to they read the science and I think a lot of people are hoping that they're gonna find some sort of shortcut, some sort of scientific shortcut. Like, can you see all these videos, shortcut to this, and there are no shortcuts. What was the physique that inspired you? Bob Harris. Well, he was the ultimate aesthetic physique. He was the best physique of all time. He <laughs> really was. Everyone talks about every, Frank had... Zane. Frank Zane had an awesome physique, don't get me wrong. His physique inspired me because he was a small guy. He was our height. Yeah. You know, at his max 190. But Bob Paris, he had those just 
perfect yeah. lines. Yeah, guys watching this, make sure you guys check out Bob Paris. You guys can, <laughs> can Google up pictures because a lot of people don't know the name. Yeah. But I was, when I was 16, I picked up a book at GNC um, because that was really, there was no real um, like specialty stores at the time. It was, you walked into GNC, that's where all the products were sold and everything else. And I got, bought a book called Beyond Built. And yeah. that was the first book I ever read. And I didn't start training until two years after that, but Bob Paris's book showed all the instructional on how to do movements. All right, so what we're gonna create with this now. What do you got there? I hate to call this a, a cable crossover. It's on uh, 55. Because it's not a cable crossover. It's just a cable fly. So, so instead of crossing over, you're just squeezing. We're gonna, to so we're gonna step in, but with this, instead of coming down, you see too many people, they do this movement and they, they do this. Right. And it's like we talked about. The chest is gonna curl over, okay? And you're gonna hit more shoulders and arms, everything else. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna step out and I'm gonna create, a, I'm gonna push and I'm gonna come out and really just contract the chest, okay? So in and out here, okay? So you're really gonna feel this in the bottom of the pecs, but it's really gonna... It's the same thing as any of the others. You're not going too far with that deep stretch. No, tension, tension. Okay, you can see where all this is coming out. You can see all the fibers all the way up to here. So great movement once you get a lot of blood into the muscle, you do some compound movements, stretch this thing back out, and then, uh, you know, determine, okay, do I need to go further with the workout from there? So you notice I squeeze like that. So every rep. It's almost like the weight's just there to assist with the squeeze. You can get the squeeze even without the weight. So I can understand why people like to call this a finisher movement because as you can notice what James is trying to do here, he's really tensing and holding that top position. Like he's, he's like got a count of two, whereas I'll hold it for maybe one second. He's got a little uh, more hold to it, but he's really, really getting that contraction, bringing those fibers out. So you really do, you bring your chin down. Yeah, you see that? Yeah. And I, Only because you're, trying to, you're but, trying to make sure it's contracting. But I feel that, see, so I'll tuck my chin. So you're trying to like- So I can really feel that upper chest hit my chin. It's not for the contraction, it's so you can feel it. Yep. It'd be like putting your hand there just to make sure yep. it's contracting. Do so you notice that? Yeah, yeah. See, if you never said that, you pointed out something that I never thought in my mind. I just do it. You're doing it so you can literally feel but it. But I literally, feel it that, as you said it, I'm like, wow. And yeah. so you can feel it. Like if That's you why have an I extra do it. hand to stick up there to yes. make sure it's contracting. Good, good, please. Good. Good. So these sixteen four movements, sets. Four sets a piece. So sixteen sets. What do you normally uh, on a full workout, what would you pair chest with? Everyone, I don't I do it. everyone split is different. I do I've done it all, but most importantly, I do it now. I do chest one day, shoulders one day, legs one day, back one day, arms one day. So there's five total days a week that I train, but very rarely do I do five days in a row. And that's because of the travel. But if travel weren't an obstacle, would you train Monday through Friday and rest no. on the weekend? You'd still break it up. Usually not more than three days in a row. Because by that third day, I'm pretty tired. Right. So I would normally train on a Three days on, one day off, two days on, one day off. And through all your whole career, you've only done one body part per week? No. I've done, yes, once every five to seven days. Yeah. I've never done twice a week, like arms were weak, I'd train. I don't believe in that, that's a farce to me. Um, if your arms are weaker, I don't think over -train, like training them more is gonna really help. Right. I, didn't, I don't believe in that. How do you, uh, what's your philosophy then on if you're trying to bring up weak body parts, as far as the amount of energy focus that you put into your strong body parts versus weak body parts, let's say whatever it was, let's say if you were trying to bring up your arms, how would you, 
How would you devote more energy attention to that? You know, I think if you're going, like I had weak calves, for example, and I noticed like when I first started going to the gym, like I would train uh, chest and calves together. So I would go in the gym and I would hit calves first. I would put all my energy into doing the calves and my calves started to grow. Instead of starting with chest and then at the end, because no matter what, at the end of the workout, you throw in these smaller, you're not gonna train as hard as the beginning. Right. Okay? You go in the gym, you hit that body part. But I think, you know, with, with those kind of things, remember it's just consistency of getting in the gym and training. Mind to muscle connection, do an exercise that, not necessarily what Jay Cutler or Ronnie Coleman do. You gotta find, okay, this is what works for me. If you're gonna focus on isolation movements like the preacher curl or preacher machine, um, you know, cables, if you're gonna do more constant tension. Listen, cables are always gonna be more tension than swinging dumbbells or barbells. So you have to not look at the overall picture of, oh, well, this is a mass builder. This is the, that's the misconception. Mm -hmm. So people think, oh, the, if you don't use dumbbells and barbells, you're not gonna get big arms. You'd be stunned at these guys that built arms with cables and lightweight. Oh man, even you uh, can use bands. Oh no, bands, man! I've, some of the, the strongest I've ever been, and I've used bands. It, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I've used bands in hotels and everything else when I had no other gyms. I mean, you can laugh at that, but listen, it's just all tension. We talk about that. Well, cool, man. Well, this was uh, this was cool for me. I mean, no matter how long I've been training, I'm always curious to see different people's perspectives, and you know, I think everyone kind of has their own way of doing it, and you kind of pick and choose. Well, the thing is, I could come in next week and do this chest workout and it'd be totally different. You know, you just, it's going to go by the day. Yeah. I felt good today, so see what next week brings. That's all. I take, I take everything 15 minutes at a time. I tell everyone. Your whole life? Yes. Yeah. Everything's lit 15 minutes at a time, so. Hey, it's a, you know, keeps you more present, right? But I'm going to go have some total protein, little carbs, and uh, get my next meal in. Thanks. Okay. Appreciate it, dude.